Hey everyone, Kurt from FullOnDrums.com here with you today. We're going to cover how to tune a floor tom. Now the one that I have with me is a 16 by 16 it's a Maple Pearl Sessions Custom. I'm going to be using it to get kind of a rock tone out of it. So I'm going to go for more of a lower, thuddy kind of sound. To accomplish that, I'm going to be using an Evans G2 coated. It's going to be a two-ply head, and so it's going to have a lot more attack, a lower note to it, and the coating is going to give it a warm sound, but it's not going to ring as long as a one-ply head. Now, when you go and you're going to select heads for floor toms or for any of your drums, one of the things to do is kind of already have an idea in your mind of the sound that you want to get out of the floor tom. If you want a lower fundamental and you don't want it to ring that long, go ahead, go through the head selection of the different companies, in this case I chose Evans, but go through and pull a couple of heads and tap them, just like this. You actually hear the starting note that the head makes all by itself before you even put it on the drum. So if you find a head that's got a little more warmth to it and a longer note, it's going to add those characteristics to your tom. If you find one that's a little bit thuddier, a little lower, a little deader sounding, a little more attack, you're going to add those characteristics to your drum. So it's important to recognize what the head's offering before you even put it on the drum and begin tuning. So let's get started. I'm just going to place the head on here, make sure it's seated evenly. Grab the hoop. It's an eight lug drum. And I'm just going to set this down. I'm going to start spinning the tension rods down into the lugs. And I usually go the ones that are directly across from each other. This helps me to pull the hoop down evenly. That way I'm not sitting cattywampus or off to the side and creating any funny spots in the drum head. Because the whole goal when you're tuning is to pull the hoop down as evenly as possible. And almost there. Two more to go. One of the things to take note of when you're doing this, since you are screwing it down by hand, is check to see if you've lubricated the lugs and the tension rods. Oftentimes, making sure that there's grease on them will help you to A, spin them down with you know less resistance, and also that extra gunk in there does help from keeping the, uh, the threads from backing out when you're playing with all the vibration that goes through the shell. Now that everything's uh, finger tight here, and I've gone and already done the same process to the bottom head, it's just sitting there finger tight as well. I want to go ahead and see what kind of a sound I get out of this. So I'm going to hit it. It's not going to be pretty, but it's going to give me an idea of what I'm starting with. Actually, that's not too bad. Okay, so using the cross tuning method, I'm going to pick a lug, start over here. I'm just going to go probably like two thirds of a turn. Go to the next one farthest away, just like bolting down the rim on a car. Bringing it up here. Repeating that process, almost done. And I'm going to see where that's got me. Now, usually visually with a floor tom, since I tune them with obviously less tension on them, I always check to see if I've got wrinkles anywhere in the head. Even if it feels even, it's always good to look and you know visually check to see what you've got. Now, that doesn't sound too pretty, but what I want to go ahead and do is turn it over, go to the rezzo head, and I'm going to do one of two things. Either by adding more tension to the head, I'm going to cause this drum to ring a lot longer and have a lot of presence and sustain, or I'm going to leave it relatively loose. It's going to give us kind of that flatter, thuddier sound. And for depending on the way you play, it can almost act as a second bass drum. So let's flip it over. It's not going to be much. Now, I do tend to tune my bottom heads tighter than my top heads. It's not a rule. It's just the way that I've come to find it works best for the sound that I try and get out of drums. If it doesn't work for you, that's fine. You know, experiment around with your drum heads. See what gets you what you're looking for. So you can hear that's a higher note already than what I had started with on top. Flip it back over, see what that did. Not bad, a little bit of a full note. Now I know that I want to get just a slightly deader sound out of this. I'm not wanting that long sustain. So I'm going to drop just a few of the lugs. Now this is an eight lug drum. And for me, I kind of go against the grain with the way I tune drums. Um, I've talked to some people and they always make sure that everything is the same exact tension. When I'm tuning floor toms, sometimes I'll just loosen up adjacent lugs. I won't loosen up all of them. So eight lug drum. So for me, I play tic-tac-toe here. I've got two lines going this way, two lines going this way. I'm going to leave these two, but I'm going to loosen this set here. So these four I'm going to drop down just a hair. Let's see where that gets me. All right. I like that. Nice and thuddy. Got a good body, a good presence, and a good sustain. Now, 
If you're not happy with some of the overtones and you want even thuddier sound, you can go ahead and not try and accomplish all of that with head tension. You can add tape if you want. Um, some people prefer to use those E-rings that Evans offers. I think Noble and Cooley makes them as well. Uh, you can also use moon gel, gaff tape, whatever suits you to kind of deaden the head out and pull the overtone out of the drum. No matter what, experimentation is the key. And uh, again, it just takes practice and you always have to have an idea in your head of what you're already going for. I hope this has helped you. This is Kurt at FullOnDrums.com saying thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.